Okay, let's get started. So first thing we'll do is we'll add the pigment to our measuring container. And I'm just using this Artist Loft soft body paint because it's really inexpensive and it's already soft bodied. And so for my demos, I like to just use this. Um, they actually also make a pore paint um, that's very reasonable, but you know, the quality is not gonna be as good as if you're using Liquitex uh, or Golden, Liquitex Professional or Golden. Okay, so I'm doing a purple blue here. This is a urine specimen jar and it has a measuring system on the side here. So I am at about 20 here, okay? So let's go ahead and add a bit of water here. I added 40 of water, so two parts water, one part pigment. I'm gonna mix that up, okay? Now this is just like a, you know, basically a wash, right? So this is what delineates what makes a wash different from like acrylic pour is that we have some medium in there to give it some body. So now let's add our acrylic glazing medium. So I'll add another 20 here and see how that feels, okay? So that would be one part paint, one part glazing medium is what I have right now. So I can feel that's a little bit thin, but it really depends on what you're going for. You might want a really thin pour, you know, and sometimes you might want thicker pours. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and add another 20 to bring us to 100 here, okay? You don't have to be this exact, okay? When I've done these in the past, I really have just eyeballed it. All right, we're gonna mix, we're gonna get another color going here so we don't have just one. So that feels pretty good to me. Um, it's thinned out, but it's not super thin like water. If I wanted to make it thicker, I could put more medium and that would make it a little bit more translucent. If I want it to be richer in color, I'd add more pigment at this point. Okay, so we'll put this aside. Now let's do another color. Because I only have one measuring container, I'm going to go ahead and pour this into my container. And then I'll just have to wash this out. Or if you, you can buy these urine specimen containers from Amazon, a huge bag of a hundred, I think for like 20 bucks. And so they're, they're useful if you're more of an exact kind of person, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna wash this out and then we will do the next color. Okay, so our container is ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and just put my finger on the 20 mark here so I can see where that is. And again, we're not having to be too exact about this, but okay. So you can see here that I have, you know, that much pigment, right? So now let's do, let's do the, the a medium Next time, let's let's kind of go with the medium next here. So I'm gonna do 40 of medium, so that takes me to 60. I actually think it's better to do it this way because then you mix the medium and the pigment together. So I'm just doing white here. I always like to put white in with my pores or a light color. Usually a dark, a medium, and a light, okay? So that feels pretty thick. So now we put the water in and get it to whatever consistency we want. And of course, if this container is like too small, then you just go to a bigger container and you can add more water. So it is good to have your pour paints in relatively the same consistency. You don't want one really thin and one really thick, generally speaking. Okay, now that I'm mixing it up, it's actually pretty similar to that one. I would say this, I prefer the thinner pours because when they're too thick, they kind of just get a weird texture. I don't love how it looks. This one is actually a little bit thick for my taste. So I'm just gonna go with a little bit more water in there. With the pores, I also recommend not doing more than, you know, let's not include white, one or two colors. Three absolute tops, because you're gonna get mud eventually, you know? And the colors are gonna mix with each other. So you don't need to have so many different colors. Pick a, a color scheme, a color palette you wanna work with and go with that. And, you know, just sort of keep it simple, especially in the beginning. Okay, so now we have our white ready to go. 
and I'm gonna clean this out. Actually, what I'll do here with my next color, I'm gonna keep that white in there. And I'm not too worried about this dripping on the canvas here because we're just gonna pour on top of it. Um, let's go ahead and we'll make another color and I'll use some the white that's already in there. Okay, what I decided to do is I actually had some purple blue left over from a previous um, mix that I was doing. So I'm just gonna do some purple blue, but I'm gonna kick it more to the blue side. And, whoops, let's see if we're about 20 here. Starts to get to be hard to see. I think that's good. Okay, so we're just, it's a very similar color, um, just a little bit more on the blue side. I liked adding the medium first, so I'll just go ahead and do that again. And actually this one, I think I put maybe a little bit more medium in. So this one might be more translucent, probably not a huge difference. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and do the water. And you have to really mix this well. It'll feel really thin at first, but then as you keep mixing it, it's going to, you'll start to feel its body a little bit more. And like I said, you know, if you're mixing in these small containers, you might feel a little limited. Feel free to also mix. I, I kind of like that it's small. I just feel like I can mix it really well. But if this was too thin or too thick, I'd put it into my other container and then I would just add either medium or water or pigment, depending on if I want it to be more opaque, more watery, or whatever I was going for. Okay, so we got our next color. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll pour our mix into this container and here comes the fun part now. So now um, we have purple blue, violet blue, a lighter violet blue, and then we have white. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe just start with, with some bigger shapes and then play around with small designs within those shapes. Um, I have this rosin paper. You wanna have this paper under, it's gonna make a mess. This is rosin paper, but you can use um, plastic or whatever it might be, whatever feels good. And then also I'm gonna give it another stir. Okay. So let's start here. So you can also, if you want to, get a palette knife or get a, or a squeegee, actually a large squeegee, and you can play around with this a little bit. But for now, I think I'll just let this do what it's going to do. So we have our dark blue. Let's bring our lighter blue purple in. We'll have it coming out of this corner. You'll also notice once you start pouring, if the table is, um, uneven or if it's tilting to one direction. So that will be more apparent here as we move on. So you can see I just dripped into that white, um, or what dripped the white into the blue and I love when that kind of thing happens. So now we start to see things interact. I don't like to have too much on my, my um, canvas. So I'm gonna use this now to move some paint around. I don't wanna make it thin, but I just, um, just wanna help it move around a little bit. They also make these that's smaller. In fact, I think that would be better. So I'm going to grab my smaller one. But you see, I don't, this will probably eventually just fill in there. But if it doesn't, I'll pour more there. Okay. I can just tell we're going to want to have more paint here. And let's let this dark blue kind of do a little bleed with the lighter blue. And let's bring this dark blue all the way up as well. And let's just drip some more blue into the white there. Some really cool things happen there. And this is where, again, you could have little control and just pour and walk away, right? And let it do its thing. Or you can do what I'm doing where you just kind of help it move around a little bit. So if I, you know, if I go into this part here, then I'm getting the dark blue into the light blue. I'm not too worried about that. Let's just see what happens. A lot of this is play, right? You guys know I'm very much about purposeful play, having a good time, s s asking yourself, what will happen if, what will happen if I do this, what will happen if I do that, and just messing around. You wanna really be really careful about your color scheme. You know, I, I wouldn't do a complimentary color scheme on this 
because when they mix, unless you want to get some browns in there, um, but you know, when it mixes, it's going to get kind of muddy and this will continue. This will work its way through for like hours. It'll just slowly move and do its thing. Notice I'm trying to get the side. So I just, whatever's dripped on the side here, I'll just use my fingers and um, just cover my sides. So it feels really finished when it's done. It'll continue to drip over the sides most likely, but that's okay. We just wanna have something on there so that when it's done, it feels very complete, ready to hang. Okay, so now let's have a little bit of fun with some water and some rubbing alcohol. So if you spray water, you can see that you create these interesting little effects. So if you spray rubbing alcohol, you get this idea of cells. Some of these cells will close back up, um, but it's just a fun way to mess around. And, you know, maybe this white part, we don't want to be so overt. So we get in here, you know, we can go like this, right? And draw with the paint that's there. Create a little gesture drawing of sorts. Or you can get back into your large tool. Right, and just sort of drip the colors around like splatters. Um, you know, this is really gorgeous what's happening here. I'm really enjoying that. And so as I watch this, I can see it's slightly downhill because I can see it flowing downhill. In theory, if we're flat, well, if we're flat, it's gonna be really more sitting flat and it's not gonna move. So what I wanna do is wedge something under there, okay? It could be a little bit of wax paper. I wouldn't do anything that'll stick to it. So like wax paper, or plastic would be the best thing, or even like these lids here, if you're not too attached to it, but that might be too much. So let's just see what happens when we, because now you see this is moving back in this direction, right? So that might've been too much, but let's see, because if it finds a little spot where it settles, it doesn't move very much, then we know we've gotten to a point where it's level. You could also get a level on your table if you wanted to. This is pretty cool the way it is. I like what's happening right here. I think that's really fun. So um, we have some paint left. We could drip some more on. I'm kind of feeling like maybe this white form wants to actually push back out again. Let's really push this out to the corner a little bit, see what happens. And I mean, what's so fun about this is there's, there's control, but then there's also not control, right? Like what I just did, I don't know how that's actually going to play out when it moves back down. So that's where I think this is really fun because I don't get to control it completely. Um, okay, let's get some of this dark. And just kind of move that around a little bit more. I mean, it's so cool the way it is. It's like, there's not really a whole lot we need to do to this, right? I'm really liking what happened here. It's almost like a petal. So I'm feeling like maybe doing that um, a little bit over here too, but maybe with a smaller tool, maybe a, just my palette knife here. Let's just push this a little bit. Let's take a little risk. Um, this is a good place to take some risks and play. You know, and then after you do this enough, you'll find like what techniques really work for you. You know, I might end up thinking, oh man, it looked better before. And that's okay because acrylic is forgiving. This can dry and we could do a whole nother pour on top of it. And as you saw, we're not using a lot of paint. We're mostly it's medium and water. So it's like, you know, and you can get the cheaper paints to play with. So that way you're free to messing around and experimenting and seeing what happens. You know, at this point too, if you wanted to brighten up some spots, you could do that. Like maybe we want a little bit more brightness right there. Right. So let that do its thing and I'll do water, a little bit more water. And let's do another shot of alcohol. Woo. <laughs> so we'll let this do its thing. Again, it will take that completely changed it. Do you see that? How the water, then the alcohol, it's almost like a whole new painting now. Um, it might take a few minutes to go back to where it was, or it might just have transformed right in front of our eyes, which is kind of cool. Okay, I'm feeling like I might want a little bit of dark right in here. You can also, to get like the last bits out, you can get water and spray it. 
So I'm trying to spray away from my painting, but you can sort of water that down a little bit more. You don't want to do a whole lot, but that'll just get the last bits out. Yeah, so now you see it's actually going back to where it was before after that alcohol. But the alcohol did really do some cool things there. What's fun about, you know, watering it down a little bit more, it just gets a little bit more, you know, flowy and easier to work with. I don't have a whole lot of paint. So you guys saw that I had about half of this container filled and I pretty much used it on this small canvas. Um, this is a nine by 12. So that, you know, you need a bit of paint for this to work because you want it to cover. Um, I think I actually had just the right amount of paint. What I have left up more of is, is a bit of the white. So um, we'll just let this play out and see what happens when it's done. Also, uh, one quick thing, what's nice about using these old yogurt containers, um, my lid is being used right now, but I could put the lid on and I could keep this pour, got a bit of pour paint left. And so if you make too much, this should stay for quite a while. So that's also a nice thing about using old yogurt containers or hummus containers with the lid so you can actually save your paint for later. Okay, I'm doing one more thing here. I'm just gonna, I have so little of this light blue color left, it's not worth saving. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. Let's just put it here. And let's put a bit more of it here. You can definitely overwork these things. So warning, <laughs> they are easy to overdo. So you have to be careful. It's like so fun that you just want to keep going and going, but better to have a few pieces that you're working on that you can maybe now take this idea like we have to set up a canvas somewhere else so that we can just let this stay, let us do its thing, get away from it, and we can keep playing on another canvas, right? And not overwork this. That would be a really good way to not overwork it. One more spritz of water and alcohol, and I promise I'm done. Just in this little spot there, and that little spot, and that's it. That's it, I'm really gonna stop now. The only thing you could do if you want, just double check your sides, make sure that the paint is on the sides. You know, and you can check back on your painting. Um, it will take several hours for this to totally dry. I mean, really probably like four or so. And you can check back in the beginning and just see like, okay, am I happy with what's happening? Like you can see here, I've got these solid shapes here and I'm wondering about this one, if I wanna mess with that a little bit. And I think I'm, I'm just gonna let it stay. 